Oh. He is so cute. Look at her. Oh my god. I love this is what she's really cute. This is why I love her. And she's nice and she's kind and oh my god. The name's Rana Dragmail, and welcome back to Seduce Me. Now, I've received lots of comments, and I will be doing the human routes. If you guys haven't seen the poll, this was the sp surprise poll. I was gonna ask you which human, which um, person we should do for the human routes Naomi, Andrew, or Suzu. And an overwhelming amount of votes for Naomi for, to do first. Uh, some people voted for Andrew, but more, more or less, Naomi was the winner. So in this episode, we will be seducing Naomi. I'm actually really happy because Naomi's really, really pretty and I love her. I really do. Trust me. So I'm kind of glad. So what I'll do is go up to the choices we make. You know, skip all that story, dialogue, shit, whatever. We go to the choices that only for Susan and Naomi. That we haven't covered. So with that, let us start and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we have to go with Dragon Company for Suzu or Trinity Corporation for Naomi. And we're doing Naomi, so Trinity Corporation sounds just fine. Bah, fine. Be lame. I'm sorry, Suzu, but it's Naomi's time to shine. And Suzu just bolted out of here. So we're just so we're just gonna be like me and you both, Naomi. Me and you both. She gave me a smile as if relieved by the fact that I felt the same way as she did. See? Why can't she just be normal like the two of us? Uh I mean I kinda disagree with you because normal is boring, but anyway. You do you, Naomi. It's Suzu, Naomi. Think about it. Very true. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I want to have just mac and cheese and a soda, but we're going to be with Naomi on this, so we're going to have what Naomi's having. I think the sandwich sounds pretty good right now, anyway. Okay, guys, I'm really sorry. I wish I can stay and help you guys. I really do. Mostly Eric. I do want to help Eric, you know? Yeah, okay. And But I'm going to go out with my best friends, and we're just going to hang and chill. So you guys can take care of it. I know I know that for a fact, because I have been with each and every one of you, and you have taken care of everything splendidly. I'm sorry, Eric. I'm sorry, Sam. I wish I could be there with you, but sadly, I cannot. I must go hang with my friends. Are you sure? I'm sure I trust these guys to be able to work everything out. Mostly because I've gone through each and every route of them and they have worked splendidly. James with the garden, Damien with the lobby, Sam with the front lawn, Eric with the dining room, and Matthew with the cooking. I think they'll be just fine. Thank you for trusting us, miss. You're welcome, James. We'll have everything done for you by the time you return home. Okay, Eric, I definitely trust you. 
are still big. Okay, let me just move on. We gotta focus on Naomi. Focus on Naomi. I'm sorry, Eric. I'm literally trying to block him off of my screen so that I can focus on Naomi. To be honest. <laughs> um. All right, we'll wait here while you go get your things. All right. I was strangely relieved to know that everything was going to be okay while I was gone from the house. I trusted the guys enough to do everything they could they could for this house party, so my mind focused itself on hanging out with my friends. Eventually, I was out the door, walking toward Naomi's car, towards Naomi's car with Naomi and Suzu. Suzu grabbed the entire back seat as I took the passenger side. Naomi started the car and drove off towards the city. Hey. It was nice driving out with my friends. After all that had happened, it was good to just go out and forget my troubles. Well, since we got you out of the house, we might as well go to the mall and walk around a bit. We did just eat breakfast after all. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good meal, though. Could have had more flavor, in my opinion. Oh, shut up, Suzu. <laughs> oh, their meals are delicious. Suzu, you eat chili peppers when you're bored. Everything you eat always needs more flavor. Ah, uh, well, that could be true, yeah. Um, going with the name. If you, if you say you need to teach me, Suzu, it's basically siding with Suzu, so I still can't get over that, Suzu. You never eat spicy things, Anderson. You don't know how it feels. Uh, I have. In yes, I have. And I hate spicy things so much. I would have to gulp down gallons and gallons of water just to stop the burning taste. I hate spicy food. Okay? Anyways, after the mall, what do you want to do? We could go to the Pink Lady Cafe and chill out with Kay. I'm sure she'd love the company. We'd get to meet Kay for the first time. Well, even though we kind of saw her in like one of the short scenes with Simon, Tabby, and Diana. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna. But we have to stop by the arcade. They have this new game out called Orion. You get to control this guy named Isaku and you're part of the rebel forces and you get to shoot things and there's robots and... Sheesh, we get it, Suzu, we get it. We'll go to the arcade. She said Orion. Uh, the first thing when she says Orion, the, f the first thing I think of when she said Orion is I'm thinking of the little, the little, the little boy from Amnesia, and oh my God, he's adorable, and I love him. And yeah, okay, I'm gonna stop talking about that now. Which one first, though? You know how popular Kay is. She'll be swamped with customers later in the day. I'd rather go in the late afternoon. She has better options during the last hour of the cafe. Well, okay. So basically after the arcade? You figured me out so quickly, Patterson. What did I tell you about using my last name? Well, let's go to... Oh, choose. Okay, Suzu wants to go to the arcade. Naomi wants to go to the cafe. So we follow Naomi's, ad Naomi's suggestion and we go to the cafe. This music is nice. I like it. We hit the mall and walked around a bit, as we planned, before driving over to the Pink Lady Cafe. It was a small, homestyle cafe with a lot of pink. And when I say a lot of pink, I mean a lot of pink. Look, the curtains are pink, the wallpaper is pink. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, I remember this room when um Damien showed us a part of his past when they came to the human world. It's really pretty now that we physically can go here and eat. It's pretty cool. Hey, it's Kay! The cafe was crowded, but we definitely caught Kay's attention as we walked in. Hey, girls, hey! Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you! Have a seat, I'll be with you in a minute, okay? Hey, girl, hey! And there she is, as busy as usual! I told you we should have gone to the arcade first. Nah, I want to eat food. Food, food is good at any time of day. Naomi glared at Suzu before leading us to a table to sit at. Suzu sat across from me and as Naomi sat to my side. After a couple of a couple seconds of settling into our seats, Kay slid into the empty fourth seat with a smile. So, how's everything been? Oh, everything's been great, Kay. Oh, did I mention that I have these five men working for me as servants and they are all hot as fuck? No, you gotta come to my house, girl. You gotta see them, especially the sec the second eldest um 
brother he's like totally hot and he's totally my type and i just love him and just i'm gonna stop talking now but yeah basically it's just there are five hot guys who are my servants and our brothers and they are you should come see them that's it okay i'm gonna oh also that they're incubi i hope you know that of course you know that because you've seen them when they came to the human world they are five hot incubi boys come to my house k come to my house <laughs> i'm sorry i kind of spazzed out a little bit crazy yep it has been crazy there are five hot men working for me right now life's always crazy with you <laughs> but i can tell susu's not happy to be here that kind of breaks my heart you know yeah susu stop breaking her heart <laughs> Susu smirked and gently punched Kay in the shoulder, making Kay laugh. Naomi and I chuckled at the sight. Kay and Suzu were like sisters, wild and crazy. However, Kay didn't have any known relatives, so it was always nice to see her connect with Suzu. How about you, Naomi? Have you figured out your problems? Ooh, Naomi's having problems, and she didn't tell us about them? Hmm. Hmm. Suspicious of you, Naomi. Suspicious. No, and now's not the time to talk about them, Kay. Susie's mouth is like, ah! She's keeping things from us? Well, that's a shock. Huh? Naomi keeping secrets from us? That's a first. Hey, see? She knows what's up. <laughs> she holds more than secrets, I'll tell you that much. Oh! You guys! Aw, she looks so cute here. Don't worry about it, Naomi. You can tell us on your own time. Naomi stared at me briefly before smiling in relief and happiness. Thanks. No problem. Kay giggled as Suzu rolled her eyes and groaned. Eventually, the four of us just started to chat and talk about random events that happened to us. I decided to not speak about the boys and just focused on school. You should have talked about the boys. She knows about them. Yeah. Whatever. Truly, though, it was relaxing to feel somewhat human again, without thinking about incubi or anything of that sort. I don't want to be a human. I want to be a succubus. Uh, okay, never mind. Anyway, simple young adult problems were already enough for me to handle. We eventually lost track of the time and would wound up staying longer than we expected, making us unable to stop at the arcade before going home to dress for the housewarming party. Kay, as much as she wanted to come, had other plans, but she wished, wished us the best. Okay, skipping all this dialogue because we have been through this already. Okay, we are going to my room and eating. Can't find one of the Yukibai as much as I want to. As much as I want to, girl! I want to so badly to just go after Eric and... Hmm! Yeah. Okay. I decided against bothering them. I, they knew where the food was, so I went to my room and ate alone in my room. It's not my problem. A <laughs> girl, she's like, it's not my problem. I turned on my computer and started to jam to music as I ate my food. As I ate, I began to think about going out. There were so many places to go, things to do. Stay in my room, the arcade, grandfather's grave, the pink lady cafe. You know what? Hmm. I think... Well, we can't stay in a room. I think we should go to the Pink Lady Cafe. I th There's a, probably a huge chance Naomi's there. So let us go there. Because the arcade will probably have Suzu. I don't know where Grandfather's Grave will lead us. I think the Pink Lady Cafe sounds fine. I arrived at the cafe, ready to relax. I didn't want to be stuck at home on a Sunday. Besides, the cafe always had something new to drink. No matter how often you came. I entered the double doors and looked around. Not many people were in and Kay didn't seem to be working today. Oh well, she can't always be working. I made my way to the pastry bar and took a look at what the cafe had to offer that day. There was always something new now, now matter when you came. Whatever. Which is what kept people coming, myself included. As I browsed the delights, my mouth began to water. Now I'm hungry. Why are you doing this to me? I had just eaten earlier, but the cafe's pastries always looked good enough to tease your appetite back into a hungry state. I want to get my chocolate. 
You know what? I'll be right back. I'm gonna get myself a chocolate. I am back with my chocolate. I got two Twixes, A, so I will be eating them throughout this whole thing. Okay, first. Mmm, Twix. I love Twix, Twix is life. Both the smell and the look of each dessert was carefully crafted to appease. You didn't regret buying one and biting into one. I finally made a selection and headed to the cash register to purchase my treat. What can I get for you? Hi there. You look pretty. Hi. I'll take a couple chocolate and raspberry macarons and a pink lady latte, please. Oh my god. First time I tried macarons was like a couple weeks ago before school started and they taste amazing. I had the green tea one. I had the chocolate one. Um, there was more. I just can't remember the rest of it. But they tasted so good. I'm gonna keep eating these Twix. Um. This is some good stuff. Wish I could give you guys some of this. <laughs> Pink Lady Latte, I have no idea what that is. Coming right up. Hmm. Lily was Kay's assistant who mainly stuck to the cafe's finances and computer work. However, when Kay wasn't in, Lily took over becoming the face behind the cash register who gave you what you needed. Lily, where's Kay? Kay had to fly out to New York suddenly. She said it has something to do with delivering something special to someone. I'm not too clear on the details. Girl, Kay, you're in New York. Come visit me, girl. Girl, come visit me. Literally, come visit me. Kay. Ah, okay. Sounds like fun. Wish I could go to New York. Um, hmm. I don't think you'll want to go to New York. Being honest, it is a city life. I, I grew up, I was born in New York and grew up here, still living here. And I have grown accustomed to the city life, but I'm not saying I like it. I don't like the city life. I really do want to move somewhere out in the open with grass and trees and mountains and stuff. It would be awesome to just lay in the mountains and just do nothing. I need some time away from the city and the bustling stuff, trees, bustling cars and all that. <sighs> Plus, there's a lot of shootouts. Here we play a game called Is That the Sound of Fireworks or Gunshots? Especially on the 4th of July. Jeez, I hate that. It's not, my my neighborhood is safe. So I can walk out. I have nice neighbors and stuff, but still, I'm kind of afraid. And especially since I'm going to college in the city, it's like, eh. And since I heard about bombings in the city, I'm like, eh. I'm kind of worried about that, so I don't think you'll want to visit New York. Um, anyways. Don't we all? Here you are. Enjoy. I took my order to a far corner table and got comfy. The Pink Lady Latte was a cafe special that everyone adored. It was a normal latte with a very subtle raspberry flavor. The foam was pink too. Hmm, I want to try one. Before I could indulge, however, her voice stopped me. Oh, hey! Hey, girl, hey! I knew you would be here, so I came. I looked this up to see Naomi enter the cafe with a smile towards me. I smiled back, not expecting to see her. Of course we expected it. Hey, Naomi! Mind if I join you? No, not at all! Come on, sit down. I'm just about to have another one of this Twix. 
Uh, God damn it, my hand. Yep. I have another Twix in my hand. I'm going to savor it. So come join me as I eat this Twix. Not at all. Naomi nodded before quickly getting herself a coffee cake slice and latte and joining my table. I've been wanting to try their latte for a while. Is it any good? Oh, girl. It's nice. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> try it. I like it. It has a nice raspberry flavor. Naomi gently blew over her latte to cool it before sipping it, smiling at the taste. Mmm, this does taste good. I'll have to get this from now on. The raspberry is a really nice compliment with the coffee. This is kind of cool, and I want to try it now. While I'm eating the Swix, I am a weird child. I giggled. Naomi loved food when it wasn't made in the school cafeteria. Don't we all? The school cafeteria food is shit here. Trust me. You don't want it. Mm. She wanted to own a restaurant one day, but always focused on studying the business side. Naomi had natural cooking skills that made my grandmother that made grandmothers seem like novices and making at making you amazing food. Girl, you need to cook for me. My grandmother cooks a lot of stuff, but trust me. You do not want to eat her food. She puts too much oil in everything. And that is unhealthy. She's actually staying with my cousins. And if you watched one of my videos with Damien's route. Where Damien beats the shit out of Malix and shit. That was one of my cousins that came. And she was like, girl, I need to be there to record with you and such. So yeah, that was the cousin. She lives there with my grandmother along with her siblings. And, oh my god, they all have health problems because of her. And it's like, why? And they even told her, they went to the doctor, they told her, they told their dad, and they're just like, they don't know anything. And I'm just sitting there like, are you fucking kidding me? They are doctors. They have a degree. You don't. Because you're all so dumb. Can you fucking not? Jeez, I'm gonna just... Uh, let me eat this Twix. Oh. oh, speaking of Twix, are there any other Twix... Whoa. whoa. Are, there, are there any other Twix fans here? People who love the Twix chocolate? Because I'm a big fan of them and I love them so much. Mm. Mm. Need to finish chewing. Mm. You should get macaroons next time with it. The raspberry macaroons taste definitely bring out the flavor in the latte. I should. Naomi slowly grew a look of thought on her face as she stared into the latte, probably thinking about food again. It was during these moments that I got to see a simpler, almost beautiful side of Naomi. She was very smart. Smarter than me. However, she held seriousness very close to her to passion, dedicating her heart to her dream. Naomi is so cute. It was enviable. I sipped my latte and ate a macaroon before speaking and breaking th her thoughts. Thanks, by the way, for coming to my impromptu party. I know it was last minute and all. Naomi broke away from looking at her drink to looking up at me in surprise, then with a smile. It was my pleasure, really. I mean, our pleasure. Suzu came too, and all. <laughs> she didn't seem happy to be there, though. Ha! Naomi blushed a bit before clearing her throat and taking a sip of her latte. She then looked at me again with a slight frown. But hey, how are you holding up from that? I'm sure meeting all those business people was tiring. Girl, let me tell you, that was stressful and a lot of work, and I hated answering those questions. And then my mom tried to bring up this guy named Andrew and introduce me to him, and I think she's trying to hook me up with him, but I was like, nah, mom, nah, not interested. After all, I'm interested in you right now, so, yeah. Excuse me, I burped. <laughs> 
It wasn't anything I couldn't handle. It was just the suddenness of it that tired me out. Well, I'm sure you did great. It was a great party. The food was amazing. My dad complimented me, saying I did awesome. And Matthew was the one who cooked the food. Oh, Matthew, you cinnamon bun. A lot of people say Damien's a cinnamon bun, but did Matthew's a cinnamon bun with an S? So, there's a difference. Matthew's the cinnamon bun, and Damien is the cinnamon bun. Yeah, anyways, it was amazing. Matthew did an awesome job cooking. I slowly began to remember the party, remembering how I felt alone throughout it. I wanted to be with my friends, but I had to put my business air to impress my guests and my father. Did I try too hard? It was supposed to be a simple party, but it felt like a job interview. Before I got too deep in my thoughts, I felt a hand gently cover mine. I refocused my thoughts to reality, seeing Naomi gently holding my hand. Aw oh, girl, I would hold your hand too. Hey, I know that look. You're about to overthink it. Don't. You did great. I'm sure of it. Thank you, Naomi. That That's so sweet of you. See this girl? This is why I love Naomi. She's nice and she's pretty! I stared at Naomi, unsurprised that she caught onto my thoughts, and happy to know that she cared. Thanks, Naomi. Naomi smiled and blushed, giving a small nod. She was absolutely adorable when she smiled like that. I didn't know how, but her smile was able to make the room lighter. No. She is so cute. Look at her. Oh my god. I love, this is what, she's really cute, this is why I love her, and she's nice, and she's kind, and oh my god. Naomi then pulled her hand away, placing it back on her latte with her other hand and cupping the mug, and sipped her drink. Naomi licked her lips and let out a sigh. This is really nice, a relaxing Sunday afternoon at a cafe. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, it's nice. It's almost like a date. Ha! I think I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say that. We gotta initiate the wooing. You know? We're not doing anything. We gotta... She's not doing anything, so we gotta step in. Initiate the woo. You know? Yeah. It's almost like a date. All of a sudden, Naomi's face turned pink as she looked at me. Confused, I tilted my head and gave her a quizzical look. Naomi, are you alright? You're turning red. Oh, innocent us. Naomi must have snapped out of her trance. She fanned herself and tried to calm down from whatever was on her mind. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm fine. Really, just a little warm, that's all. <laughs> sure, Naomi. Sure. Wink. <laughs> I just copied Madam. Oh my god. But Madam doesn't mind because we wink at each other all the time. Wink. Madam, if you're watching this, wink, wink. Okay. Naomi brought her latte up to her mouth and began to drink. Practically chug it down. She was actually kind of cute how flustered she got from a simple statement. I giggled quietly to myself before sipping on my latte. Naomi and I eventually lost track of time and wound up chatting until the late afternoon. When the cafe wasn't hopping, Lily would join us and we'd talk about silly things like TV shows or movies. Oh, wow. It's getting late. I gotta get home or my mom will flip. Girl, go home before your mom flips. I Trust me, my mom would be like that too. If I came home late, she'd be like, she texts me, I'd get 20 minutes calls and she'll be like, where the hell have you been? You're late. Like, if I'm just one minute late, she'll be super upset. Like, where the hell have you been? What the hell? Okay. Yeah, anyways. Aw, okay. Would you like a ride home? Sure. That would be great. Thanks. We quickly headed out with Naomi driving me home. It was nice to be alone with her rather than have the explosive Suzu around. Hey, Suzu's nice. I preferred Naomi's calm logic anyway. Hey, don't do that. She's your girl, though. Dude, we gonna fight. I am tired of your shit. I didn't read the magic book, so I have no magic with me. So I'm gonna be doing this fist to fist. So yeah, anyways, let us fucking fight. Let's do this. Taekwondo powers activate. <laughs> that sounded so weird. Yeah, come at me, bro. Come at me. I fucking dare you. No way this was happening. No way was I going to let myself be a victim of this. 
I... I will... What are you whimpering? Are you praying that the boys will come and save you? <laughs> Fuck the boys right now. It's me and you. I am going to use my fists to punch you in the face. I'm going to punch your face in the face. Okay. I closed my eyes and took a breath before snapping up to one leg and sweeping my foot across Malik's face. Hey, we kicked him sweet, swift in the face. Ha! Ha! Malik flew to the side and rolled, rubbing his cheek in complete shock. I feel, I feel Eris step back away from me, leaving me to look at Malik's and shake my foot out from the hit. Hey, girl, back up. I got this. I got this. Malik quickly hopped up and growled at me, obviously surprised, but irritated beyond belief. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Let me show you what real power is. You little bitch! You think you're tough, huh? Well, I'll show you your place! Come here! Oh, this is gonna be fun. Come at me. I fucking dare you. Malik charged at me, dropping the gun that would never hurt me to the floor and reaching for my face. However, I quickly crouched down and swept my leg in front of me, knocking Malik down once again. Ha! I rolled back away from the fallen devil and glare as I rose back up to my feet. Just because I'm a human doesn't mean I can't kick your ass. Hell yeah! I placed my hands in front of me before sliding over to Malik's and slamming the tip of my foot into his head. One of the devils around us tried to step in, but Eris held out her arm, stopping them. No! Stay out of it! Let Malik deal with it! Girl, thanks, Eris. Thanks. Girl, thank you so much. I, I can kick this man's ass, trust me. As commanded, the devils that surrounded us stood away from the fight. The group watching us was lost in intrigue as I stood up against their leader. I continued to kick at Malik's, who tried to block my kicks, my kicks with his arms. I brought a foot up before slamming it down onto Malik's chest. I definitely heard a rib or two crack at the impact, girl, causing Malix to lose his breath. Girl, you big savage right now. Yo, that would be awesome. What I didn't expect him was grabbing my leg and pulling it out from under me. I fell to the ground, landing with a loud thud. Oof. I felt a pain shoot up my arms and run through my body at the impact my body had on the ground. I tried to push off, but the pain forced me to stay down. Malik took that chance to roll on top of me and pin me down, glaring and smirking down at me evilly. I'm not ready to get intimate with you, boy. Get the fuck off of me, please. I'm not ready for this. Stop being intimate with me. I know he's not being intimate, I just like playing. As I tried to get him off, the futility of the situation dawned on me. I was fighting a devil. I was just human. I wasn't magical, nor was I special. I wasn't going to beat him. It's useless, woman. You're as good as dead. Bet you regret trying to fight me in the first place now. No, I don't regret it one bit. I kind of kicked your ass. Fear began to consume me. Oh, for the lot of... Blah, 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 blah. I messed up my words. Oh, for the love of God, please someone find me. I prayed. I hoped that I wouldn't have to keep fighting. I was becoming desperate. You have major balls trying to fight me. You're not even a man. You're a puny woman who's about to get what's coming to her. Excuse me, bitch. I just cracked your ribs. We ain't as puny as you think you are, so can you shut the fuck up, Malix? What made everyone in that warehouse drop our fighting faces was the screeching of police sirens coming closer to our location. Malix smirked even wider. It's time to have fun, boys. Make sure you kill them all. Ooh, she snapped. Whoop! The devils all seemed to get excited and start to walk past us to meet with the cops, but a loud finger snaps, stopped them, and made them turn around. Malix and I looked to see Eris with her hand in the air, post snap. Eris, what are you doing? She's owning you. That's what she's doing. Enough, Malix. We've wasted enough time in this stupid town. I'm getting out of here, and I'm taking the rest with me. You go, girl. I didn't know whether to laugh or not. I bit my tongue as Malix got angry again. Like hell you are. Boys, do as I say, 
or else. They ain't gonna listen to you anymore, boy. None of the boys moved. Eris snapped her fingers again, causing the boys to rush back past her and out the uh, out another way from the warehouse. Malix, it's over. You can't even beat a human girl. You're losing your powers. Lower devils only follow higher ups that actually have power. Hey, she called you out. Shut your mouth. Oh shit. Malik summoned his gun to his hand and shot multiple times at Eris, who somehow managed to teleport away from the shooting line and reappear by us. She shook her head, letting out a sigh before grabbing Malik's by the neck and pulling him off of me. Malik started to choke as Eris stared coldly at him. All this for a bunch of pretty boys. You must be stupid and desperate. Hey, yo, true. <laughs> Eris looked to me, making me tense up. Human! I suggest heading home to your pretty boys. You don't want to get involved in a supernatural investigation. It's a pain in the ass. Girl, I got you. I'm going home right now. She then turned back to Malik, glaring daggers into him as he glared back at her. You really think women are weak? Let me fix that, sweetie. Hey, go get him. Go get him. And with that, Eris vanished into the shadows, taking Malik's with her. Bye, girl. Bye, Felicia. As I was left alone, the police siren stopped. I looked over to the open passage to see the incubi with a large police siren microphone staring at me in surprise. Where is he? I swear I'm gonna... Ah, oh, he's gone. He's gone. Eris took him and left. They won't be coming back. It was all so surreal. I was helped by a devil. But I quickly shook off the feeling. I was alive, and that was all that mattered. I fought to stay alive, and there I was. The boys tried to question me, but James cleared his throat, catching the attention of his brothers and me. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. Okay, James. Altogether, we began to walk out of the warehouse back home. There was no way in hell anyone was going to find out about this. Whew! Time to skip all the Angus stuff. No. After going through that mess of the boys, seeing them go, and my fucking bae, Eric. No, Eric and Sam. I had to say bye. That was painful. After going through that stuff. You know what, Diana? I don't care anymore. Just, just take my memories. Just take them. Just take them. <sighs> my mind began to wander. Were the memories truly worth my life? I remember the way the boys helped organize the house party and help me home after Malik's ordeal. But then I remembered, I'm only human. I wasn't a demon. I wasn't special. The world of magic was too large for me. I already had a world to face without magic being involved. I felt a wave of sadness run through me, replaying the memories of all that happened the past few days one last time. Before speaking up. Fine. Take my memories. I couldn't keep them. They were beyond my world. They were beyond what I needed to know. This is all for Naomi. All for Naomi. I was never meant to know of them. Diana nodded. Glad you understand now. The pit beast below me closed its jaws. Vanishing into nothing as I was lowered to the ground. I stood up straight and looked at Diana, resolved. Diana sighed before closing her hand and muttering Latin phrases under her breath, loud enough for me to hear, to barely hear. She then opened her hand and revealed a small purple vial. What is that? A memory potion. It will remove all of the memories of demons and magic from your mind. With the memories gone, you can live your life as free as you want. Oh, gee. That sounds great. What about the boys? I have a spell for them. As soon as you drink that potion, you sign your contract with me, and I will take the boys back to where they belong. No! No, they do not belong in the demon world. They do not belong there. They do not belong there. Will they remember me? I'll make sure they won't. They won't even remember ever thinking about coming to the human world. Girl, no! 
No! No! No! This is gonna make me cry! Don't do this! Why didn't you use it before now? Why do I have to drink it knowingly? Because demon magic isn't black and white, dear. The one catch is that the potion has to be drunk with full natural consent. So I can't just slip it into your chocolate milk or pour it into your mouth as you sleep. That's the downside of good succubus magic. Eh. So I'll be... The plain, boring human. No potential, no abilities, no memories to even have abilities. You'll be a plain Jane girl in a plain Jane world. <sighs> I hate having to have a boring life, but it's all for Naomi. I'm at it before looking to the vial. My memory, my memory in exchange for my humanity. I popped the cork of the vial and gingerly brought it to my lips. Goodbye, magic. Goodbye, demons. Goodbye, strange future. Let's just remember, I'm going to be acting like I have never met the vo voice just like how she is. So I'm going to just be like pretending that I have my memories erased as well. So I need to dwell on Eric for the last time. Goodbye, Eric. I'll miss your sweet, flirty smirk. And everything about you. And I'm going to miss you, Bay Eric! I'm sorry. I just had to cope with that. Anyways, moving on. Hello, normalcy. I tilted my head back and chugged the drink down, feeling its magic already starting its work as it reached in the inside of my mouth. I felt dizzy and sick, but I sucked down every last drop of the liquid. I felt the memories of the boys fade away. I never met them in my house when I moved in. I never was attacked by Amalex or his goons. I never was kidnapped. I never met Diana. As I finished drinking, my I felt my body grow weak, almost becoming unable to continue standing up. My vision was blurred and fuzzy and I couldn't help but let my eyes shut. I asked for this. I wouldn't have the boys protecting me anymore. I didn't even open my eyes when I finally fell forward into Diana's arms. It's for your own good, sweetie. Forget about it and be normal. All right, Diana. I'm sorry. I felt my mind slowly relax. There were no demons, no devils, no magic to drive me crazy. Everything was normal. Everything was peaceful. Everything was ordinary. Just the way Diana wanted. Just the way I wanted. And I what I want, but okay. Eventually, the morning arrived and the sun screamed at me to get up. Wake the fuck up! Surprisingly, I woke up before my alarm clock, which was nice. I stretched out and quickly got dressed, getting ready for school. I went over in my mind what had happened over the weekend, suddenly feeling wary. I had moved in Friday night, held a house party Saturday, and enjoyed my day Sunday. Yep, sounds right. Hmm, I wonder what we're missing though. Isn't there something we're missing? I feel like we're forgetting something. I'm pretending I don't have the memory, so just go with me. I scooped up my bag and headed downstairs to the dining room. The room was empty and I felt hungry. I needed to eat something. I looked at my phone and saw a text I must have completely forgotten about. Naomi asked if I was okay. If I was okay? What did she mean? Did something happen yesterday? I tried to remember, but for some reason, yesterday's events seemed blurry and almost blank. I remembered going to school, dealing with Lisa, then going home. Hmm, I know something happened, but I can't point, pinpoint on what it was. Uh, I don't remember, however, what exactly went on. I must have been, or else I wouldn't be safe at home. I rubbed my head, trying to shake out exhaustion. Damn, studying. I sighed and texted back. Sorry, I forgot to text you back. Everything was fine. See you when you get here. I made myself some quick toast and coffee, needing a jump start. I felt drained and didn't I did not want to fall asleep in class. Yeah, like that doesn't happen to me almost every day. <laughs> Something bothered me though. My house felt empty, or at least emptier than when I came for some reason. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it slightly bothered me. Hmm. Something missing. Were there people here? I wa you know what? I can't keep up the act anymore. I miss the boys right now. I miss it all. I'm gonna just whoop, not pretend that I've never met the boys. She's gonna be like, I never met the boys, but I'm gonna be here remembering all of it. 
can't do it. I just can't. It, you're missing the boys, girl. The boys, your servant, incubi boys, your base too. Oh, jeez. I finished my food and quickly rushed to the front, waiting for Naomi's car and confident that nothing was going to happen. I avoided talking about what happened had happened yesterday. I'll be riding with you guys from now on to and from school. As we entered the school, we quickly gathered our things from our lockers and headed to class. There were no events, to my surprise. Naomi and Suzu took their seats around me, Suzu in front of me and Naomi beside me, before the class bell rang and the class was greeted by our teacher. There was no Diana to come fuck up our life. Hurrah! History wasn't as boring as economics, but I still managed to space out in the class just the same. Naomi seemed to be very tense, focused on her desk more so than usual. I was almost tempted to poke her and see what's wrong. My phone, though, vibrated in my pocket. Thank God I set it on vibrate before class. I pulled out my phone and checked it, seeing a text from Suzu. I began to text back, suddenly going into a text conversation. Dude, what's up with Naomi? I don't know. Man, I hope everything's alright with her. This isn't like her at all. Same here. I looked over once again at Naomi. She was intensely scribbling in her notebook, almost obsessively so. The grip on her new pur looking purple pencil was almost tight enough to bend it each stroke she made with it. By the way, Kay kind of let me in on what's going on with Naomi. What's going on with her? Apparently, Naomi's got a crush on someone. Like, a huge crush. She's been to the cafe to see Kay multiple times since the beginning of the school year. Girl, you got a crush. Why didn't you tell me this? I could have helped you. Is it a guy? I mean, we're supposed to be romancing you, but if it's a guy and you like this guy, I can't do anything but make you happy. Girl, I live to make you happy. Tell me who this crush is. Really? I couldn't believe it. Was Naomi having romance troubles? I looked over once more. Something made my heart slightly skip at seeing her. I was worried. Yeah, for, yes, but for some reason, I felt a little angry. Who did Naomi have a crush on? Why was she so nervous about it? Why couldn't she tell me? I put my phone back into my pocket, ending the conversation. Hopefully, Naomi would explain things to me. I was almost abnormally curious about her and this mysterious crush. Time continued until the end of class period in that exact status. Naomi held her tense ground, focused on, focusing on nothing but the incoherent scribbles on her paper, while Suzu and I watched on in worry, not caring for the class we were in. As the bell rang, Naomi stood up suddenly. I, I need to go. See you in economics. W wait, girl, but... Wait! And for the first time ever, Naomi was the first person out of the door. Woo! That This is a serious problem. If she's the first one out of the door, then this is definitely a serious problem. What just happened? I don't know. Chase after her, duh! I needed to see what was wrong. Naomi was important to me and I needed to help her. I instantly grabbed my things and rushed out of the room. Whoa! Anderson! Hey! I wasn't listening. I needed to get to Naomi. The hall was full of students, which made spotting Naomi a little harder. I wished I was just a little taller. Naomi. I began to push through the crowd, trying to find a trace of her. Her hair, her shirt, anything. I managed to get a glimpse of her white bow, instinctively following it down the hall into a classroom. Naomi's class was the other way. Where was she going? I continued following and peeked into the classroom, seeing no one else in there except Naomi. What shocked me to was seeing Naomi standing over an empty desk, whimpering and almost sobbing. Girl, no! Let me give you hugs. Will that help you? Hugs? I didn't know what to do. The world behind me in the hall went into slow motion as I stared in at Naomi's back. She obviously wanted to be alone, but I wanted to help her and fix whatever was bothering her. Help her! We're gonna help her! She's like... Yeah, she's our, she's our girl! I couldn't leave her like this. I quietly stepped into the, into the room and closed the door, making Naomi flinch and freeze up. Naomi? Naomi gasped before turning to me, a shocked expression on her face. Tears had painted her cheeks, which made my heart sink in my chest. Naomi, what's wrong? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing. I... 
Naomi quickly rubbed her eyes and face, trying to cover her face and clean it of sadness. I pressed my lips together, not believing her. Naomi, talk to me. You were acting strange in history. I was just listening to the lecture. You were scribbling in your notebook. I was watching almost the entire class period. I have bad handwriting. No, she didn't. She had the most precise and elegant handwriting I had ever seen. Why was she lying to me? What was going on? What was making her so distraught? Naomi, whatever is troubling you, troubling you, let me help you. You can't help me, okay? Whoa, I'm just trying. Don't yell. Jeez, I, I'll just leave them. Bye. I mean, I stepped back, feeling the sudden anger in her voice. She covered her mouth, regretting what came out of it, and stared almost in pure fright at me. Naomi. I stepped towards her, not wanting to scare her, but wanting to be closer. Naomi didn't seem affected, so I continued to walk towards her. Eventually, we were only a dusk away from each other. Tell me. Naomi sat, stared before letting out a shuddering sigh, nodding in defeat. I, took a, I slowly took a seat in the desk in front of me, watching as she moved to stand in front of it. I've been having some issues, okay? Issues? What about? Well, I mean, it's not an issue, but... I mean, it's hard to describe. Is someone bothering you? In a way. Is someone bullying you? No. Does someone have a crush on you? Well, actually, it's the opposite. You have a crush on someone. Yeah, but I... I don't know how to handle it. I mean, I used to believe I liked only guys, but all of a sudden I had these feelings. So I went to Kay, but she only listened and told me to just go along with it. But I don't know how to, I mean... So this is a girl crush, not a guy crush. Hmm. Very peculiar. I wonder who it could be. You have a crush on a girl? That's not bad, is it? I'm the one who always wanted to talk about guys. Girl, 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 it's completely fine. I talk about hot guys all the time, and I, um, bi. So, <laughs> there are some hot girls, though. Huh. No way. You can like whoever you want to like. Exactly. But, what if I liked someone who was really close to me? That's not a problem at all. My mind instantly went to... Suzu? What? But anyways, did Naomi like her? There was no way. No way in hell. Then again, maybe Suzu's rebellious personality interested Naomi enough to like her after all of these years. It wouldn't be impossible. Girl! What? Uh, yeah, I somehow felt a little jealous. Naomi liked Suzu? How could that be? I had to stop. This wasn't helping Naomi. I needed her... I needed to help her feel better beyond anything else. So what? If you like someone close to you, that makes fe the feeling that much more powerful. Who knows? Maybe she likes you back. Naomi stared at me with a look I almost couldn't understand. It seemed strange, but it was almost... loving. What if... the person I like is... you? See? 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 It is. It's us, me, myself, and I. Yep. I felt like I was dreaming. What? She liked me? Huh? When? How? This is too cute. I can't. Ah! Help! Naomi looked down at her, the desk, her face turning red. I've liked you for a while now. I mean, well, I've liked you since last year. I was really not sure about how I felt, though, until last semester, when I started seeing Kay. Aww. She told me that what I was feeling was normal, even though I kind of thought I'd always go for men. I mean, not that I have anything against people who aren't straight, but like... Naomi whimpered as she fumbled over her words. I found it adorable, but I couldn't help but stare at her in surprise. She liked me? Gently, Naomi took one of my hands and brought it to her lips, closing her eyes to breathe before looking back at me. I like you. I really do. Okay? Oh, I like you too, Naomi. 
I felt my heart flutter and flattery. Naomi, one of my best friends, liked me. I wasn't sure what to say. Naomi's face was almost as red as a tomato, but she continued to hold my hand, wanting me to say something. She was a patient woman. I guess the confession really got her nerves out because she, now she was calm and seemed relaxed. What could I say to her though? This was a huge deal for both her and me. She had been one of my best friends for the majority of my life and here she was, confessing to have a crush on me. It was surreal, yet it made me feel both strange and fluffy. Naomi smiled and gently lowered my hand. I watched as she, relaxed, as she let out a relaxed sigh. I feel so much better after saying that. Thank you. I couldn't help but stare at Naomi longer. Was she not expecting me to say anything in return? A sentence bubbled in my stomach, forcing itself out of, forcing itself out of my mouth without filter. I'm glad you feel better. Go, go out with me. We got to initiate the so Go out with me. I did not know what came over me. I let it spill out. I liked her, though. I liked her a lot. She was adorable and cute in her own special way. I loved that she was an individual and stayed true to herself no matter what Suzu or I did. Sure, she was a little ditzy, but that added to the charm. Naomi stared wide at me, blushing as reddish as could be. I was positive that if she blushed anymore, she would faint from all of the blood rushing into her cheeks to color that them that red. Did, did, did you just? Yeah, yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. I stood and gently took Naomi's hand. I needed to know how I felt. I needed her to know how I felt. She poured her feelings out to me. It was more than fair to share mine with her. I really like you, too. You're adorable, and I love that about you. You're kind and sophisticated, and you have this sort of charm. Naomi, will you go out with me? Yay! Naomi was completely red in the face, but her eyes started to water. Rogue tears dripped from the edges of her eyes as she smiled at me. Yes! Yes, I will! Yay! I, I do love Naomi, I really do. Naomi rushed around the desk, separating us, and hugged me tightly. I held her to me and smiled. I felt a small part of my heart filled with pure joy. I felt happy like nothing was going to stand in my way with Naomi to help me. Months went by since Naomi's confession. We were happy and eventually graduation came along. The rest of the story could almost be passed over. I graduated from school as one of the top 10 students of my class. My family was proud, even my dad. Maybe it was because I did my best in school. Maybe it was because I was finally a woman in his eyes. Naomi, my girlfriend, went to culinary school right after school, learning the basics of cooking and business. You do, you girl. Her desire to make a cafe was astounding, and she was, and soon she was ranking at top of her classes within the first few weeks. Kay offered Naomi a job at the Pink Lady Cafe, letting her serve with Lily as a supervisor. Naomi instantly accepted and worked with Lily to bring customers in the town and customers in the town the best coffee and treats ever made. But what of my future? Well, with Naomi's support, I finally decided to stand up for myself. After I graduated, Andrew and I pre presented our cases and the board decided to have Andrew step into the CEO position of the Anderson Toys Company. Good for you, Andrew, but things would be better if James was the CEO. James. James. James is second bay. So I'm still kind of upset with that. Anyway, moving on. Andrew, CEO. Okay. My father was beyond shocked. I gr graduated Andrew and went to the f University of Chicago to get a degree, while Andrew dedicated himself full-time to the company. Andrew vowed to respect the wishes of the late CEO and help the company become an even grander company. Andrew had a large amount of heart, so it was easily accomplished. James would have done a better job, though. Sorry, Andrew, to put you down, but I'm just sad that James is gone and the boys is gone and Eric is gone. My grandfather would have been proud to see how Andrew helped it shine. Hmm. The CEO position filled. My father had no choice but to let me decide my future, which made me happy beyond compare. No longer would I have the future scaring me into a corner. I could choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What did I want to do? 
Did I want to help Andrew build the company? Did I want to venture off on my own? Naomi reassured me that she would support me and help me through whatever I decided to do. I was grateful and would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could shake me down from that happiness. <sighs> One morning I woke up and took in all that had happened as if it were all a dream. My life seemed to fall perfectly into place. It was almost surreal. Is everything as you wanted, sweetie? What are you doing here, Diana? You should be out of my life. Uh, seeing Diana makes me remind me of the boys, but we gotta act like we don't know the boys, we don't know her, and it's just breaking my heart. Don't go breaking my heart. Oh. I sharply turned my head to see a woman, dressed in gold and black gown, staring at me with unnatural red eyes. For some reason, I felt as if she was familiar. I just couldn't place my finger on it. She swirled around a small purple pencil, smiling to me with a happy look. Hmm. Purple pencil. Is it similar to the one Naomi was holding? Hmm? Uh, anyway. I, however, wasn't happy to have a sudden intruder. Who are you? There's no need to worry about who I am. I just wanted to make sure you got what you desired. I didn't want to just leave you empty-handed. What? So you basically did something to Naomi to make it like we could have happy lives together? Girl, Diana, I appreciate your help, but I don't want your help! What I desired? This was making no sense. Yet, in my heart, I felt like it did. Something about her was making my heart both elated and angry, but I couldn't pin down why. How did she even appear in my room in the first place? Whoever you are, you need to leave. I will not hesitate to call the police. Oh, I'm leaving, all right. I just wanted a small pick-me-up. Chasing down boys and bringing them home was a hard job and took a lot out of me. No! They're back at home with a demon Well, No! No! James, no! James is going to be with Diana and it's going to break my heart and Eric's just going to be a natural incubus not happy and everything and it's just going to be like ah, the precious cinnamon roll Damien he's going to have to live with being the bastard son there and I'm just going to oh, my heart oh man uh, Matthew's going to be there taking care of his mother which is kind of sweet, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to stay there. But anyway, and Sam will just keep being the rebel demon, and hopefully he doesn't get himself killed. Oh my god, I'm so sad right now. Diana's going to be marrying James, and I'm super, super sad, because he didn't want that. Uh, I, fun I, suddenly I felt suddenly weak, staring at the woman. I felt warm and fuzzy inside my body, and I wanted the woman to cure me. Huh? Why was I feeling like this? Would you mind if I steal a little kiss for the road? It'll be a long trek to where I'm going, and I need to make sure I have the energy to get there. It's only fair since I helped you get your little happy ending, no? No! Get the fuck out! I don't want you anymore! Just leave! Leave! Oh, I felt myself nod anyway. What was I doing? This woman smiled before walking over, leaning over me and kissing my cheek. I felt waves of energy deplete from my body through my cheek. I felt elated and confused, but I almost moaned at the feel of the kiss. Girl! After a short moment, the woman finally stepped away with a lick of her lips. She rubbed a finger over her lips as she stepped away from me. I couldn't help but stare blankly at her in surprise and confusion. Lovely. Now, this is the last time you'll see me. I hope you and your sweet Naomi have a wonderful life together. Goodbye, Diana. I, I wish to never see you again because you just broke my heart. I still love you because you're the demon queen. Long live the, hashtag long live the demon queen. But still, I, I'm upset right at you right now. Please get out. The woman placed the purple pencil into the cleavage of her dress and began to leave the room. I was too stunned to move, but I watched as the woman opened my balcony window, floated up, and dropped from the balcony. And thus, my price is paid. What? I heard her voice echo in my mind before I heard the snapping of the pencil, breaking my thoughts. What was I thinking about? Oh yes, my life. 
boring life as usual. I let my mind wander to my future before my phone started ringing. I instantly picked it up. Hello? Hey, can I come over? Sure, girl, come on over. You're my girlfriend. Yeah, sure. What's up? I just need to talk to you. You sound excited. Okay, I see, I'll see. i see you in a bit. I grew worried. What was wrong? Nothing's wrong. Her voice sounded happy. Did something happen? My mind began to sort through possibilities that could have occurred with Naomi. Soon enough, I heard Naomi's car pull up to the gate. I rushed to the front doors and opened them to see Naomi looking at me with a gigantic happy smile. Guess what happened? Wait, guess what? Just guess. All right, all right. Hmm, did you get transferred up a level in class? Nope. All right. Did you win something? In a way. What is it? Tell me. Did you win the lottery, girl? Tell me we'll be rich. Before I knew it, Naomi was holding up a ticket that had the word Paris printed across it in bold letters. Girl, you're going to Paris? Take me with you. I want to go to Paris. Guess who's going to Paris for summer before sophomore year? You're so lucky. Paris? Oh, wow. That's awesome. I smiled, seeing how happy Naomi was. She and I both knew that France was a great place to learn about cafes, second only to Italy. However, I felt my heart grow heavy. She was going to Paris. Girl, take me with you! Did you not have a second ticket? The date across the top notch noted bleh. The date across the top noted that the trip was in three days and would last the entire summer. She and I had talked about going together as kind of an international date of sorts. She was going to go alone. Huh? I know that look on your face. What's wrong? Girl, you didn't get me a ticket to Paris and I'm upset. But I hope you have fun in Paris because you're my girlfriend. Yeah. We'll be in a long-distance relationship. Naomi stared at me blankly before looking to her hands. She then stared to giggle. Stared to giggle. Whatever. Before laughing almost hysterically. Huh? What's so funny? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't show you. Show me what? Jam Naomi gently moved her fingers, revealing a second ticket behind hers. Yes! I knew you wouldn't forget about me! Girl, let's go to Paris together! I gasped and stared as she smiled widely at me. We both can go. Yes! We get to go to Paris and explore and see the sights. I've always wanted to go to Paris. I always wanted to go to Paris. It's like my one of the top ten places to go visit. Oh my god! Oh! I felt my heart lift from its heavy feeling as I stared at the second ticket. I quickly rushed to Naomi and hugged her, kissing her. She was shocked, but I felt her relax in my arms. She kissed me back. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of the, this woman in my arms. There was no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high, all at once. Here I was, holding the woman I wanted to be... Who I, I want, bleh. here I was, holding the woman I wanted to be with like nothing else mattered. Holding woman I wanted to be with, okay. I'm sorry, that was the wording was wrong. I thought I was pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, I vowed to cherish her and love her for the remainder of my days and beyond. And that was my happily ever after. You do you, girl. And Naomi's love. Hey, so that was it. That's Naomi's rope. Okay, so the second most votes that I've gotten is Andrew. So, in the next episode, we will be doing Andrew's route. Man, my heart is heavy and stuff. I'm probably going to be replaying Eric's route in this game just to calm my nerves. Oh, and before I go... <sighs> God. I regret everything that I have said in my last seduce me video you guys wanted to see the bad endings for the boys and after a lot of comments i've decided yes i will be doing the bad endings for the boys in seduce me too i will be doing all the available bad endings that i've seen that i get so um yeah with that being said, I'm going to put a poll in the description below 
you have to vote which guy you want me to do bad ending first. You want me to do Eric, James, Matthew, Sam, or Damien. Which guy should we do all the bad endings in first? So please go to the poll in the link below, description below. Go to the poll, vote. And in the next episode, and when I finish the human routes, I will do the bad endings for the boys. Oh, this is going to hurt my heart so much. You have no idea, especially for Eric. Jeez. Anyways, um, I think that's enough for today. We'll get to Andrew's route in the next video. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys like to see more of my videos, then click subscribe. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!